Greetings, Earthlings. Don't have a whole lot to report on today, but uh, there's a status update on the Nova 445. Um, I have uh, not made a lot of progress here, visible progress. I've been working on the uh, working on the layout for the I/O board and the graphics board. But you'll see what I have done is I've added these uh, stacking header connectors here. Um, see, they have long tailed pins and you'd have another board that plugs in either at the top or this plugs into the bottom. And the pins on that just slide into the pins on that and it will sit a bit above it and uh, leave clearance for the chips and stuff. whoop de doo Well, okay, the other thing I've done is uh, I wrote a little test program to test the RAM. Now I'm just currently just testing the um, monitor RAM. I haven't uh, gotten to putting it into 64K mode yet, uh, but that just will blink the LEDs and it'll, and well, I'll start it up here. Um, what it does is it just writes zeros to every memory address, verifies it, writes ones to every memory address, verifies it, and it writes the address of the memory location to itself and verifies it, okay? That's a pretty reasonable test just to tell us that it's basically working. Uh, we don't uh, need to do fancy moving zeros and ones and things like that uh, because those would be useful to find if the chip itself has a problem uh, that doesn't show up all the time. But if we're just looking right now for any sort of, um, you know, shorted bus lines and things like that, then, uh, then those three tests, make sure you can set it all to all zeros, make sure you can set it to all ones. And then by doing the address test, um, that should indicate whether any sort of like adjacent lines are shorted together. Because if you put a zero on one and a one on the other, the zero is gonna win. Uh, and, and somewhere along the line, that test is gonna fail. Okay, so it runs the tests continuously and it'll blink the light when it's done. And then if it should fail, it will uh, just stop and uh, with, the, with the carry light on. Again, I've only got the one sort of output thing uh, to let me know what's, what's going on at this point. And as we can see, it's happily blinking away, okay. Uh, the other thing is in, as I was going through with laying out the, uh, well, I should say the schematic and not yet the PC board, but the schematic for the uh, uh, I.O. board. I have part of that done, but I was working on the disk drive and then also the uh, graphics board, which will be a separate board. What's going to happen? The graphics board is going to sit on top and the I.O. board is going to sit on the bottom. Um, and uh, anyway, so they're two separate boards. Uh, but I noticed uh, one thing, and that is where I decode the... Uh, where I decode the I.O. instructions. Decoding the I.O. instructions, data out A, data out B, and so on. Uh, again, the Nova has a separate I.O. subsystem. It's not memory mapped. And so there's an A register, a B register, and a C register. You can do data out, data in, and then there's start, clear, and pulse. And there's busy and done bits and so on. Um, but uh, when I decoded these, I just looked at the bus conditions. It says it's not memory, and O0 is 0, and O1 is 0. Uh, and I didn't condition it with the data strobe. Uh, and so, and maybe I was thinking at the time, well, that's the I.O. device's job to do any additional conditioning and, and keep this as simple as possible. But then when I looked, you know, and it's like I would have to add an extra 
AND gate or condition, you know, input uh, on on each device. I said, no, really, it, it ought to be doing it here. Uh, so I don't know if you can see this. I want an AND gate. Uh, I have M bar or not M uh, strobe D, and that's going to go to pin six of these. So that required making a mod to the board. Well, that's not that big a deal, um, and it does not require one to make another revision of the board. You can't say, oh gosh, I screwed up and now I can't use these boards. No, I actually, in fact, planned on this one uh, for potential modifications. I'll switch this off. Um, by adding two spare, you see those? Well, the one's got the chip in it, but we'll see how, how it got there in a second. Um, but I added, a uh, place for two spare chips because I had space on the board and because it's quite often the case that you need to make mods. And so uh, we'll see about what I went through to, uh, to actually do that. It's no big deal, like I said. Okay, here's just a quick look at uh, modding a board. Uh, what I have is I, I've actually already cut the trace, which you can see right there. I'm trying to do all the work on the bottom. So the top of the board, which is what I, everybody will see, uh, will look nice and neat. Uh, but, and I've already got this wire, new wire in place, but um, what we should see now, having cut that trace, pin six of this chip, this chip, this chip, and this chip are, uh, should all be connected together still. There there and there, okay? But they should not be connected to pin, what was it, pin 13 over here, I think, pin 13, I think that's that one. Um, I could follow this trace over and it comes up to here, yeah. Um, anyway, trust me that, uh, that I've got that, uh, that there's no, there's no connections over here anymore which is the thing that was driving that directly, but I've had to put the AND gate in there. Okay, so I have fitted a blue wire uh, to go from the new, newly added socket here, socket, um, Two pin six of one of these chips. I just picked the closest one. Uh, and then you can also see I, I allowed when I added the spare uh, socket spots, uh, I, I, I left a ground and a plus five uh, connection to make it easy to hook the chip up. As long as it's no more than 16 pins, because I only put two 16 pin chips. But usually when, when you're modding a board, what happens is that uh, you need like a 14 or 16 pin chip. Sometimes you only need a 20, but that's rare. Um, so I've, I've jumpered those, and I'm going here from pin three of this one, turning it back over. Oh, okay, good. It's come loose. We're going from pin three to pin six of this guy. And what we're doing up there, so I have holes here. So I just go through the hole. But up here, I've actually wrapped the, I'm wrapping the wire around the pin. <laughs> oh, cutting the trace. I just use a like Swiss Army knife and, and uh, sort of scraped away at it until the copper was gone. Um, I was looking for my tweezers. Oh, there they are. Okay. Don't know if my head's in the way right now. That'll just wrap around that pin. There you go. It's just wrapped around that pin, and then we'll hit it with the soldering iron. There's some solder. Here's my soldering iron. OK. 
Okay. And the other one I think I'm gonna do from the other side. It's sticking up through the board there. Pin three. Is it? That's not in the that's not in the camera view. Where, 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 where would I have to have it? Okay. There. Okay. <laughs> Something like that. Yeah, that's horrible. Do it off camera. Whatever. And then I have to do similar things for um, the inputs to that AND gate. So one is going to come from the uh, One is going to come from the trace I just cut, and the other, I'll have to find a place for it. So back in a flash. Okay, and here's the finished board. Uh, again, nothing obvious from the top. Uh, and on the bottom side, we have our blue wires. Hopefully you can see that. Let's see. Oh, there's no blue wires there. What blue wires? There, see that? Wires. All right. Uh, so then we'll verify before I go and plug a chip in. Try and power it up. Pin one should go to U7 pin 13. And this is U7, I think, right here. And indeed it does. Pin two goes to U2. Pin, what was it? Six, I think. Two pin six, yes. And then pin three goes up here to pin six on these guys. Okay. I have a chip here that you're not going to be able to see because it's not going to focus. Uh, date code of 1978, just uh, what I had in my... What I had available is 74S08. That'll do just fine. That goes in there. And uh, our mod is complete. Okay, so that's the update for now. Um, what I still have to do, well, I have to test the 64K mode and then I'll test these RAMs. And uh, I have to get those boards going. I think the, I think I will do the graphics board first. Uh, cause the, cause it's almost, it's almost done. The schematic is almost done for that. The IO board, the disc drive emulator is just giving me headaches. So that's going to take longer. Um, again, I don't know what the lead time is on getting PC boards made. So it may be a while before I actually have a, uh, a graphics board, but once I get the graphics board, uh, I can actually make this thing play Taco Bot. <laughs> and if you don't know what Taco Bot is, you've got to look back through the other videos. <laughs> so it's my uh, it's my standard uh, test program, shall we say, <laughs> for for any computer that I build.